had, I auditioned for the part. I had cousins and friends like, who just loved it. Like one of my friends used to come up, with, come up to me at school and show me all the magazines and he just absolutely loved it. So my cousins and my friends would make me sit down and watch it. So I've seen some of Christopher Eccleston's kind of episodes um, and some of David Tennant's as well. So. so how did you get the part of the younger Amelia? Uh, well, it was crazy. It was kind of like I never acted before in my life. I didn't want to be an actress. And Karen kind of just pushed me into it. She was kind of like, she phoned, up, phoned me up and said that they were looking for someone who looked a lot like her. And I went for three, four auditions. And then they came back to me one day and said, I got the part. Had you and Karen met prior to working on the show? No, we had never met. Um, I was born in Northern Ireland in County Antrim and Karen was living in Scotland. So when when I finally moved over to Scotland, she had left and moved to England to start drama school. So it was just like, we literally just missed each other. So the first time we actually met was on the read through for the 11th hour. So what was, I mean, what was that like? I mean, you were ten at the time. I mean, what was it like for you, having never acted before, to suddenly end up on... I mean, were you aware that this was a big worldwide show with fans that you would one day be sitting in Alabama, I suppose is the best way of putting that question. No, I had no idea that, you know, there was such a huge fan base behind Doctor Who. Um, I was kind of, I was told by the BBC when I first started doing conventions that they could be pretty big and, you know, there was a huge fan base and stuff like that, and I was kind of like, I'm pretty sure it's not that big, so I just went for it. And I got the shock of my life. So um, I wasn't, I wasn't actually prepared for, you know, all the love and excitement people get for me when I, when I'm at these conventions. So um, I mean, it was Matt had already recorded a couple of episodes prior to you guys shooting the eleventh hour, but he still, I mean, that's his first sort of scenes that we see him on screen. And what was it like working with him? It was fantastic. He is, he is an amazing guy. He's um, so energetic. It could be like 6 in the morning, 2 in the morning, it doesn't matter what time you're filming at, but he's ready to go. He's excited. And I'm like, it's 6. I just, shh, it's still early. Um, he's, yeah, he's so lovely. And, um, just a pleasure to work with, really, yeah. Of course, there's the, the famous scene that ends up with the fish fingers and custard. So, what was it like? Do you remember filming that uh, filming that whole little sequence there? Um, yeah, I remember it really, really well, actually. I remember Matt was, they would say action, and, you know, we'd start doing all the filming, and Matt would take a bite of the fish fingers and custard, and they'd go, right, cut! <laughs> Matt would turn around and go, and just spit uh -huh. all of the fish fingers and custard out into a bucket. Um, man, it was so crazy. He was like basically being sick into a bucket. <laughs> so you did that first episode, and did you have any idea that you would be asked back? I think it was three times in total. No, I had no idea. Um, they we first filmed the Eleventh Hour, and we got that done with. And at the end, I was crying. I was like, I don't want to leave. It's so much fun. And and then a few months after that I got an email and I read it and then I read it again and then I read it a couple more times just to be sure and then I called my mum in to the living room and I was like please tell me this is real please tell me this is real and she read it out to me again and we just couldn't comprehend what was going on at the time and it was um yeah and then when they did it again and again and again it was pretty crazy I didn't realize that this small role was going to develop into such a huge thing so what was, I mean, you came, the first time you came back was the Big Bang, which is the exact opposite end of that season. What are your memories of working on that, particularly the big set that was built representing the British Museum? Um, the, the, well, we were in a real museum at the time. We were in Swansea, and it was crazy. It was so cool. I remember there was this massive, there was like this big mammoth in the museum, and it was like censored, so when you walked past it, it started like roaring and stuff like that. <laughs> And Karen and Matt were filming a scene in the museum, and Karen's mum and my mum were on the set at the time, and they walked past <laughs> the mammoth while they were shooting the scene, and it just started roaring, and the director goes, Fina, just <laughs> <laughs> And so they both blamed it on me, and the director was like, 
oh, it's, it's Caitlin, so it's fine. You just because I was so young at the time. Um, but yeah, it was in a real museum. It was so cool. Um, we got to see some pretty cool stuff. And so, I mean, you had never met Karen prior to working on the show. I mean, what was it like? You meet your cousin, and you're on the Doctor Who set. What is that like? That's, it's really strange. Yeah, I was like, before coming on set, I was kind of like, what's she like? I don't really know her very well. And then meeting her, I was like, oh, okay then, she's tall. <laughs> um, and she was just, yeah, it was it's kind of a weird thing to be meeting your family for the first time on set. And yeah, it was just very strange. And, so I think the, the last time you came back was for an episode called The God Complex, and you had sort of a little cameo in that. I mean, it's set in the hotel. I mean, do you remember any of that? I mean, it, once again, you were talking about, you, were, you kept being surprised by being asked back. So, I mean, what was that experience like? I mean, that's the last time I think you got to play that part. Yeah, um, in The God Complex, um, I was just sitting in a room, in a hotel room, and that was crazy cool. We had loads of the, um, the Minotaur? Yeah. Yeah. And um, his name's Spencer and he's the greatest guy ever. He's so cool. He's really, really tall. And like so you just have to look up at him. Um but that's you know, talking to him, I remember I was texting someone and I looked up and there's just like this massive scary beast standing in front of me. Um and I remember working with Matt and Karen and David Williams. David Williams as well, yeah. Um He's an amazing actor as well. He was asking me loads of questions and I was just being so blunt and so rude and I didn't even realise at the time. And then my mum called me over and she was like, he is an amazing actor, so me so rude to him. Um, but yeah, that's you know, that was one of the best kind of episodes I'd ever done. And, it, and for those who are sci-fi fans in the room, Spencer is now going on to play Darth Vader in the new Star Wars movie Rogue One coming out in December. Which is interesting because he plays a Minotaur because the previous time we had a Minotaur in Doctor Who was a long time ago in the 1970s. And he was played by David Prowse, who played Darth Vader in the original trilogy. <laughs> so if you want to be cast as Darth Vader, you need to play a Minotaur in Doctor Who. <laughs> so what have you been doing? I mean, you said you didn't really want to be an actress. I mean, what have you sort of been doing since then? And not wanting to be an actress, what is it like to be, I guess, how often are you recognized for being uh, the young Amelia? Um, it's, it's strange. Where I'm from, I live in a really small town um, in the Highlands of Scotland, so you know, I don't get actually recognised that much. Um, nobody comes up into the street and is like, oh my god, you're in Doctor Who and stuff like that. I've only had one situation where someone was following me and my friend around town, <laughs> just yeah. taking photos of us and uh, posting them on my Twitter page. So that was very strange, but um, sometimes when I like I go to school or I like to see someone and one of my friends says, you know, she was on Doctor Who, they go, no you weren't, no you weren't, and you actually have to prove to them on the internet that I was in Doctor Who. Um, and you know, my, my friends love to tell my teachers at school when I was at school, they would say, you know, you can't shout at her, she was in Doctor Who, and they go, oh really? And I have to go into this whole big kind of speech on how I was in Doctor Who and explain to them and stuff like that. So I don't get like, come, people come up to me in the street or anything, but I do get recognized sometimes. It sounds like it's gotten you out of trouble on more than one occasion. Yes, all the time. I was getting shouted at once and then someone was like, you can't shout at her, she was in Doctor Who. And she was like, all right, okay. <laughs> I was like, great. So what's next for you? I mean, so what do you have planned? Um, well, I've just finished school now and, you know, all my exams are over because that was my main focus for a long time. So after this, it's kind of, you know, focusing on the acting. I have a course coming up this year um, and I'm planning to, like, go on to do an uh, acting and performance course. And then, you know, my agent, on the day we left for Alabama, my agent um, texted me and she was like, I need new headshots, I need a video reel, I need all this. So it sounds like she's got stuff coming up for me as well, which is really exciting. And um, there is a small Scottish movie coming out soon. It's called Journey Bound. 
where I've been playing a very small role in it, but my my part's still developing, so we'll see what happens. Here. So what was it like working on that? On Journey Bound? Yes. Well, they we've been for the read through, um, and we've got some great actors like For Kiernan, um, and comedian Karen Dunbar, and James Alvey Kirk, but they will not film it yet until about August time this year. So it should be out in about mid of next year. All right. I think we're going to hand over to the audience now, if you're ready. So, yes. Big scary gentleman here in the front. <laughs> Hope you remember when you did this in your room. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm on that same boat again. <laughs> but anyway, uh, tell us about your fondest memories with Matt Smith on the set. On the set. My fondest memories? Um, there's some good memories on the set with Matt. Uh, there was one time where I was, it was the scene where I was sleeping on the suitcase and he had to pick me up and put uh, Amelia in her bed and you know, do the whole sad speech at the end. And um, I remember he picked me up and he ripped the back of his trousers. <laughs> and all I could hear, I was still trying to, I thought we were still rolling, so I was sleeping. And all I could hear was, caution! Um, and you had to run and sew it all back up and stuff like that. So that was, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think I've read somewhere during one of the takes, you actually fell asleep. Is that true? That is true, yes. And in the same kind of scene where Matt is talking to me while I sleep, I fell asleep. And I was probably sleeping for about 10, 20 minutes, and they're like, Caitlin, wake up, that's it, over now. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm <laughs> Yeah, I fell asleep. What's that? <laughs> I think we have a question right back here. Um, you said that you originally never wanted to be an actress. Was there a moment when you were being young Amelia that you fell in love with acting? And if so, what was it? Yeah, it was it was crazy, yeah. Um, I just... Once I got on and I started actually acting, it was just amazing, you know? And I just kind of fell in love with it then when I, they were like telling me to do something and I just did it. And they were like, wow, that's great, that's exactly how you're supposed to do it. And I was, just, you know, yeah, I, ever since then, that's what I've wanted to do, is acting, so. Thank you. You're right. Excellent. I think we had a couple of hands up in the middle a second ago. Ah, uh, you right here. Uh, hi. Hi. Remember me from the elevator? Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> When you were on set, like you saw Matt eating fish sticks and custard, like did you ever like wonder what that what that like tastes like or anything? Yes, absolutely. I've heard. I've always wondered what it tastes like, and everyone who's ever tried it has told me that it tastes amazing. Um, I've never tried it myself. <laughs> All right, this young gentleman back there, I believe. Hello. Yes, I do. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> As being a young actress yourself, do you have any tips for young actors? Um, tips? Um, well, I guess if, if you really want to do it, then get like the kind of... I, I never did any drama courses or anything when I was younger, and I wish I had because I wish I then I'd be more prepared. Um, so if, if you can, get yourself into a drama school, a drama course, anything really. Um, a lot of my friends who are actors started by doing productions like theatre um, and they, they're just amazing actors and actresses as well. So uh, that would probably be my number one tip is to get yourself involved as, in as much productions drama courses, acting classes, anything as you can at work. I have to ask you, as a UK actor, the UK is famous for a Shakespeare. Do you, is that something you'd like to tackle one day? Um, I've, I've read a few Shakespeare plays and I love them. Um, I, I think he's, he was probably one of the best writers ever. Uh, so if I ever had the chance to do Shakespeare, I would love to. That would be amazing. 
Excellent. Uh, we're going to go to a question in the back. First, we're going to get you, sir. Um, how much of the episode when it was shot was green screen versus props? Most of what I shot was props was on set and a lot of it was green screen though. So like when the crack in the wall um, opened and there was like the big eye in it, that was obviously green screen. Um, and I think probably that and maybe a few other things I can't really remember were green screen. So most of it was on set or you know, in the house. Is, is it a challenge to act against the green screen when, because when you, I guess when you act with Matt or with another actor or actress, you have someone to interact with and when you're interacting with the green screen, you're basically being said, there's a wall there, there's something scary, go. Yeah, it was, it was really difficult. I, I just kind of had to look at a wall and pretend it was scary and that's not as scary as you think it is, you know? So. All right, we'll go to the gentleman with the fez and the bow tie. Did you feel sad at the end of Doctor Who? Definitely, yes. It was like, um, you know, you, you spend every day with Matt and Karen and Arthur, and you have so much fun, and then at the end, they're like, okay, bye, and you know, you get really emotional kind of towards the end. Uh, eighth Doctor right here. Hi. Um, after you finished filming Doctor Who with Karen, did she just be like, all right, thanks for that, I'm going now? Like, did you part ways, or do you guys actually get together now and hang out since you're family? But she just kind of like, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, we, we keep in contact quite a lot, because she's living in LA, it's really difficult to kind of talk to her as much now. But um, she actually phoned me yesterday. She, you know, was telling me ha happy birthday and stuff like that. Um, and she comes home for Christmas sometimes. I remember one year she brought like all of our American friends for home for Christmas, and they were like magicians and all that. And we had like the best time ever. <laughs> um, so she's yeah, she's home all the time. And she like literally when she is at home, she lives right across the road from me. Um, her mom lives right across the road from me, so, you know, we're always at that. Alright. Alright. This lady right here. Hi, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of your uh, actor skills, and I was wondering, after you finished filming Doctor Who, did you get to keep anything from the set? Yes, but it wasn't anything, like, amazing, like, I don't know, the song of Screwdriver. <laughs> it was like, uh, they had these pumps for like Amelia like shoes and I was in love with them and they were so comfortable and I just love them so the costume let me keep them and they let me keep some like furry boots and stuff like that that Amelia owned but unfortunately they wouldn't let me take the hat and <laughs> I was like I really wanted the hat and the coat but they, they insisted because it has to go to the Doctor Who experience exhibition so I was I was upset at that but they, they did give me some pop uh, the red wellies? No, not the Red Willies either. Oh, I was so nervous. Oh, you that. had to buy a pair. Oh, yeah, I had yeah. to. Well, there's a little red windmill thing which is in Amelia's garden and that actually shows up in the 50th anniversary special as one of the dangerous items that Unit has. Really? I am nerd here before. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? Right here. You just mentioned the uh, Doctor Who experience. What's it like going through as you know a veteran of Doctor Who? What's that like? Do you get the, the personal escort, or do you just kind of guide yourself through? What's that like? I've actually never been to the Doctor Who experience. Um, it's, I know. <laughs> I, I feel like my friends go all the time, and my friend actually went the other day and was showing me photos of Amelia's section and kind of all the stuff in there, but I've never been myself. Um, I should probably go one day and just show up and be like, I was in the A part of our team recently. Alright, any other questions? Right here. Uh, Alright, we're going to get you, and then I think there was somebody yep. way in the back. We'll get to you in just a second. Uh, what would you say you had the most fun doing on set? Um, this is going to sound 
so weird, but eating lunch. <laughs> uh, at lunchtime, they just, we would all go out to like the kind uh, of food bit and they would like sit around, we would all sit around the table and we all kind of make jokes and laugh and stuff like that. And that was probably one of my favourite experiences. But other, just other things like hanging out on set where you know, Matt would go and break something, Karen would lose a sonic screwdriver, you know, Arthur would just be messing around. It was just, you know, all the time, it was crazy. I didn't ask about Arthur earlier, I mean, what was Arthur Darvill like to work with? Great, yeah, he's a really nice guy, um, very fun. That's, that's basically all I can say about him. He's really, really nice. Alright, we're going to go to the back. How do you like Alabama for the most part? I mean, it's nothing special, but... <laughs> Think carefully before you answer this question. Um, I love Alabama. It's actually probably one of the my most favorite places that I've been to in the States. Um, and, yeah, like, we were at the Space and Rocket Center yesterday. Uh, we loved it. It was so cool. We had a VIP tour and we got to sit in like the boardroom um, and we met the CEO and all that. It was so cool. Um, and then we came back and me and my brother went for a bike ride around the park and that was so pretty. And you know, we just love the area and we love how everyone says, yes sir, yes ma'am. <laughs> it's our favorite thing ever. A little bit of Southern hospitality has never heard it. <laughs> Alright, this gentleman over here has a question. Outside of acting, what other hobbies do you have? Um, just, you know, usual hobbies that everyone else has. I like reading, um, I like watching movies, and I actually, I do what's called um, Air Cadets, which is kind of like the Royal Air Force, but like a, you know, like for kids, like a youth group for the Royal Air Force. Um, which is really cool because you get loads of kind of activities that you can do. So I've been flying, I've done shooting, and um, gliding, I've done adventure training, stuff like that, and I get loads of you know qualifications out of it as well. So that's one of them. Would you eventually think about joining the RAF? Maybe for those who don't know, the RAF is the Royal Air Force. Um. Yeah. The. Yeah, I was gonna join it for a while, and yeah, I don't know what I was gonna do. I was thinking. Um, probably like working as a medic, a paramedic or something like that. But then I thought, I don't like doing stuff like that. I just want to be in the area. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was like one of my career options and then I was like, oh, acting. <laughs> but you could have gone from Doctor Who to actually being a doctor. <laughs> True, yeah. Alright, any other questions? Ah, there you go, just a sec. And this is where I get my exercise. <laughs> Oh, what was it like having Matt Smith like pick you up and put you to bed? Hi, 
um, have you gotten the chance to meet any other doctors or companions on the show? Or the actors who plays River Song? Um, I have met Alex Kingston before, who plays River Song, and she is so lovely. Um, I've met, at other conventions, I've met David Tennant. Um, yes, I got a with David Tennant. Um, I'm so pleased by that. Um, I've met... Who else have I met? Met Colin Baker. Oh yes, I'm Colin Baker. I met Billy Piper. I've met um, Donna. Oh my goodness, she's Catherine Tate. That's it. I was thinking, is her name Charlotte? I've met her. She's so nice. Um, she's one of my favourite comedians ever. You know, British comedians. Um, I met her, and yeah. So at conventions, I kind of just meet like everyone. And at first, I'm like, who are you? What did you do? Like for Fraser, when I first met Fraser, we were doing a panel together and someone asked me, who's your favourite companion? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he says, say, Jamie, what's his name? Jamie? McCrennan. McCrennan? Okay. And uh, so I said, Jamie, and then he, I was like, who's that? <laughs> All right, this is totally cheesy, but uh, I just watched Let's Kill Hitler, like, yesterday. So I told him, like, can you just say, you know, you're not dead yet, you'll be dead in 32 minutes. Do you mind doing a little demo for us? It's okay if you say it. Yeah. Well, what, what did I say? No, you're not dead yet. Yeah, oh, the hologram. Yeah, you're the voice interface. Oh, my I'm not Amelia Pond. I'm a voice interface. She can go too. Man, oh my goodness. Um, you're being asked to perform on the spot. Okay, okay. No, you're not dead yet. But you'll be dead in 32 minutes. <laughs> Scottish um, and yeah they were 